Hi, everybody. So um, today we are going to talk about mood disorders. And some of you, this is more than just being moody. Um, we're going to talk about um, depression. Uh, but there's a couple of different labels for depression. We talk about depression, bipolar, seasonal affective disorder, and one that's called dysthymia or dysthymic disorder. And so let's get started. So what are mood disorders? Well, quite simply, um, mood disorders are disorders in which the mood is severely disturbed. Now, some of you might feel like, or maybe your family members tell you that you are moody, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have a mood disorder. It just means that, you know, sometimes you don't handle your emotions in a really, um, like even keeled way that you let your emotions get the best of you. But that again, does not mean necessarily that you have a mood disorder. So what are mood disorders? Well, the first one that we're gonna talk about is called major depression or major depressive disorder. Um, basically it is the common cold of psychological disorders. Something, um, it's like a warning that something is wrong. And some of you might uh, have struggled with depression. Some of you may go, I have no idea what that feels like. Um, this is how it is a little different than uh, just a normal bad day, okay? Uh, if you feel, a lot of people talk about being depressed like they are in a pit. And so a person in a pit, you can be at different levels in the pit. Now, I'm a visual learner, so I think of a well. In fact, there is a movie out there called, um, uh, what is it called? Anyways, there this girl's in a well, and she looks straight up, and she's pretty, it's pretty deep well. She cannot get out by herself, and she's so far down um, that it really takes a rope to help her get out. However, we can be at different levels in this pit. Maybe the well isn't that deep, and maybe you are, you are at the top of the well is to here. So your head is out. You can see what's going on around you, but you can't physically get out without, again, maybe having a step stool, some ladders. Um, are you still depressed? Yeah. It's just not to the same level. And so um, major depression can look like, like I said, that, that more of a, a funk where maybe you're not all the way in the well, but you're definitely um, struggling with your mood. Uh, you can also, though, be so far down in the pit that you feel like it's hopeless and helpless to get out. With major depressive disorder, um, this includes feelings of worthlessness, uh, diminished interest, or pleasure in most activities, so things that people usually might find fun, they're really not interested in doing anymore. Uh, definitely increased thoughts of risk of death and suicide, loss of appetite, um, those struggling with depression often feel fatigued, uh, changes in their sleeping patterns, and again, just that lack of interest. Um, you can have actually the opposite though, just so you know, of last, loss of appetite you could, because of depression, be eating a lot more. Um, so that's not a telltale sign. I will also share with you a lot of people who um, the risk of death and suicide is high, but I want you to also keep in mind, it's not necessarily that they want to die. A lot of times it's they just want to stop feeling this way. They want to stop living this way. Here's... This is a lot of information. You do, do not have to write it all down. Um, it's really here just for your benefit. Um, the emotional symptoms, again, a person can feel sad, hopeless, helpless, guilty, empty, or worthless, um, feeling emotional, disconnected from other people, turning away from other people. One big sign for, for um, depression is, is a person isolating a lot. Um, if a person isolates, I'm just going to tell you right now, that is not, they need just the opposite. I know they don't want to be around people, but isolating only makes depression worse. Cognitive symptoms, difficulty thinking, concentrating and remembering things. Honestly, they may seem like they are forgetting all kinds of stuff. 
but it's just because they are struggling with depression. They might talk about feeling like they're in a fog. Um, they might be really just negative about everything. And again, suicidal thoughts or preoccupation with death. Um, behavioral symptoms. You might see their facial expressions might show it. Um, we've kind of learned in our society how to put on a mask. Uh, these individuals, though, they're almost too tired to put on the mask sometimes. Sometimes they can do a good job when they're at work or if they're with family members. They don't want to know that they're feeling depressed. But um, when they're by themselves, definitely they, their facial expressions will show it. Uh, they make, may make less eye contact put their eyes downward. They just don't want to, they don't want you to see them because they're afraid that you will see what's going on. Uh, they'll smile less often. They actually, a person that who is severely depressed, that person who's away in the bottom of the pit, they may uh, have slowed movements and speech and gestures. You can actually tell by the way they present themselves. Uh, also tearfulness or spontaneous episodes of crying. Uh, loss of interest or pleasure in unusual activities, including sex. I know some of you are like, how could you not be interested in sex? Well, depression can take you there. And again, that withdrawal from social activities. Let's talk about physical symptoms. There might be changes in appetite resulting in significant weight loss or weight gain. Insomnia, early morning awakenings or oversleeping. Um, sometimes it's also... They uh, have no problem with going to sleep, but it might struggle staying asleep uh, during the night. Uh, vague but chronic aches and pains, again, that diminish sexual interest, um, loss of physical and mental energy, global feelings of anxiety. Anxiety and depression are really highly related and correlated, um, and, or they may just feel restless and fidgety all the time. Okay, our next diagnosis that goes under depression or mood disorders is bipolar. And again, some of you who might be a little moody, um, you have a bad day or you have a really good day, uh, your family might go, you're so bipolar. That does not necessarily make you bipolar. I hope that's good news. Bipolar is defined as severe mood swings between major depressive disorders and manic disorders. A mood disorder in which the person alternates between the hopelessness and lethargy of depression and the overexcited state of mania. Uh, just so you know, this was formerly called manic depressive disorder. Um, they changed that, I want to say, uh, early 90s, late 80s. Let's compare, though, what are the depressive symptoms Oops, to the... There we go. To the manic symptoms. Well, depressive symptoms we've kind of covered already. Um, feeling gloomy, withdrawn, inability to make decisions, tired, and slowness of thought. Manic symptoms, on the other hand, can look, I mean, it can look kind of crazy sometimes. Um, a person seems super happy all the time or super angry. And anger, by the way, can be on either side, depression or mania. Um, but they often feel euphoric. Uh, they want, they have a desire for action. Like they want to go and do right now. Um, they're also hyperactive and have multiple ideas. So a person that struggles with this, um, they actually, you might see them. I mean, they really do struggle, uh, with wanting to get stuff done all the time. Um, I'm trying to change something here and it won't change. So sorry about that. So on um, the idea of having multiple ideas all the time, uh, this person, again, they're not going to sleep a lot at night. Uh, that's some, that's one thing just to kind of give you a heads up. They may go days without sleeping, but in the middle of the night, they may be like, Hey, you know what we should do right now? We should go like paint my room. In fact, let's paint it red. You know what? Let's go. Let's go to the store right now. I want to get, you know, it sounds really good. Donuts. Mr. T's is open all night long. Let's go get donuts. You know what? Let's, instead of making, instead of going, let's make, let's make our homemade donuts here. You know, what I love to make for everybody is like homemade dinners. And so I think I want to make spaghetti right now. And you know what? 
um, I think I have that paper that's due tomorrow. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that paper. You see where I'm going here? They have multiple ideas. They happen really quickly. That hyperactivity that goes along with it. And um, it's exhausting being around a person who is manic sometimes just because they um, this is an unmedicated person uh, that is manic because they really just um, are so intense all the time. Um, okay, so that is bipolar. Let's go on to the next diagnosis. Uh, this diagnosis is called dysthymic disorder. It is a mild or moderate depression that lasts for two years or more and is typically a reaction to some external stressor. So this is where um, the, what I really want you to take away from dysthymic are three things. It's kind of that what we would call more of a funk. It's somewhere over, above a blue mood, um, or I'm sorry, below a blue mood, but above a major depressive disorder. So somewhere that's just really there in the middle of that. Um, the other key to this diagnosis is it has to last for more than two years. Um, now, here's the thing though, in that two years, you can have major depressive episodes. So you can dip lower, but you will never go higher than your, blue, than your um, dysthymic mood, okay? Our last diagnosis, and I think we talked about this a little bit when we talked about like um, circadian rhythms and our sleep cycles, um, is seasonal affective disorder. Disorders caused by body's reaction to low levels of sunlight in the winter months. Um, this is cyclic, severe depression, and elevated mood. It's usually basically, we also have a nickname for it, the wintertime blues. Um, let me get so you can see the bottom, oops, the bottom note. There we go. Okay, so um, again, there's seasonal regularities, so it's usually in the winter time. Now, this does not have to do with the cold. It only has to do with the lack of sunlight. Remember, our we have less sunlight during the winter months, and so um, that really does cause people's mood to decline. It causes depression. So a unique cluster of symptoms that go with this could be intense hunger, uh, weight gain, sleep more than usual, and decreased, um, oops, the, basically in the mornings, um, depressed mood is in, more in the evening than in the mornings. In the mornings, we do a little better. Uh, just so you know, the way that this is treated most often is through what they call light therapy which they have a special light that gives off UV rays. And if you sit with it for about 10 minutes, um, it helps relieve some of the, it's supposed to help relieve some of the depression. Okay, so that is it for depressive disorder. I feel like I kind of flew through this, but you have the notes here on Canvas that you can go back and fill in any holes that you might've missed. Um, the next one we're going to look at is schizophrenia. So we'll see you in the next slideshow.